Hey Savvy People, it's Savvy Nick here and I'll continue today with the 20th episode in the C++ tutorial for beginners. In this episode we'll be covering references. The general syntax for a reference goes something like this. We have some sort of a data type followed by the ampersand symbol or the and symbol. Then some reference, I'm going to call it ref and we have to set it equal to some variable, some var. So that's the general syntax and we'll make sure to put a comment here and let's focus on creating our own reference. So in order to follow that syntax, I'll write one down here. First, I'm going to define a variable of type integer. I'm gonna call it num and I'm going to set it equal to one. So in order to make a reference to this num integer, we can follow the below syntax. So I'll define it by int. I have to give it some data type since I have a integer data type for my num up top. I'm going to use the same data type. Then I'll put my ampersand or and symbol then followed by the name of my reference. So I can just call it ref for short reference and I'm setting it equal to num. All right, you've created your first reference. So let's go through this. And before we do, make sure to subscribe below and hit that notification bell for more Linux and programming videos. A reference here mainly allows you to rename a variable that already exists. When you do this right here, you're creating a reference of an already existing variable object or some sort of a data structure. This allows you to reference that same variable across your program, but with a different name. Another great place to use references like this is when we pass them into a function. This will allow you to make changes to variables outside of that function's scope, which we'll look into later. So let's keep going with this. What if we printed out C out REF and we did an end line here. Let's make sure to save that. And we'll go over to our terminal where I'll compile the program I have and then run it. If I run it, I see one. So what happened here? Well, we have num equal to one which is an integer type. And then we have a reference to an integer called num. And we know this is a reference because we have this ampersand here. So this created a reference to num. So if we print out reference, we see the same thing that's inside of num, which is one. Awesome. So don't let this confuse you with using an ampersand with something like ref. This actually returns the memory address of whatever variable that you're using currently. So it just shows where it's currently stored in memory. So if we did C out and then this, it's a bit different than what we did up here on the top, creating a reference versus retrieving and displaying the memory address on this line. So let me just show you the difference here. So if I did C out and attached a ampersand to the beginning of this ref reference variable, we should see something different. So if we rerun that code by first compiling, and then running references, we get this very large hexadecimal here. Well, that's because this is showing us where in memory it decided to store that reference variable. So don't let those two confuse you. Know that they're two different things, but they use a similar operator. That can get confusing to some people. Just keep track of where you're using your ampersand. All right, if we go back here, let's create something more useful than this. Again, this is really a way to rename a variable if num already exists and you don't want to reference it throughout your program as num, you can create a reference to it and use that reference instead. And if you went ahead and made it this far, please hit that like button for me. It really does help me out. All right, before I move on too far, I'm going to take this, copy it down here below and comment it out for the time being. This time, I wanna switch this up a little bit. I'm gonna keep my num here. And before we talked about using functions and passing parameters into those functions. So we'll create a new function up top. That way I don't have to worry about creating a prototype and I'll have a return type of an integer. I'll call it reference. I'll put my parentheses and in my reference, I want to pass in an integer, I'll put the ampersand and I'll call this num as well. In this reference function, I want to do something to num and here I really don't want to return anything. So I'll change this to actually to avoid just to show that there is no return type. I can't return anything out of this function, but I'm setting num equal to three here instead. If I save this and make a call to reference in main, and now I have to supply an integer so I can use my num from above. Now before when we did this, we had to return a number in order to change that number up. 
That's because when you pass in a parameter here, this function scope has no idea about the main function scope. So it creates a copy of num locally for this reference to use and won't let you change this number that's outside of this reference function. So this is where a reference parameter comes into play. The address of the referenced argument here, num, is passed to the function, which instead of passing a copy, you now have direct access to making changes to the parameter that was passed in here as an argument. So let's see this because that was a little convoluted. What I would expect is when I run this program, reference num will be passed into this reference function. Reference will then, the reference function then will take number, set it equal to three, and let's see what that number becomes after we set it equal to three inside of another function using a reference parameter. So we'll just see out num and put an end line so we can see things clearly. All right, if we compile and we run, now we see three. So this here can be very useful. As you see, we were able to edit a variable outside the scope of reference because we passed in a reference parameter here, because we passed in a reference argument here before we were unable to do this so if i just took out this uh, so if i just took out this operator for the reference and let's compile and run this again let's see what happens so if i do g plus plus and then references now we get one so the only difference that i made there was that ampersand symbol and now you can see the difference between using it versus not using it inside parameters to a function if you still haven't yet make sure to smash that like button for me and let's keep talking about references here so we have now been able to use a reference in the main function where we just basically switched up the name of an already existing variable called num. We also passed in a reference here and then had access to that same number inside of a function that's not the main function. And let's make a little change to this reference function and call it and change this void to an integer type. And we'll put another ampersand here. This means we're returning a reference out of this function. So let's set num equal to three and return num. What will happen if we have an integer reference, we'll call it ref, equal to the reference number. So whatever gets passed back from this function, so num as an integer reference, will be stored in this reference. And let's print that out right away. Let's do ref. What do you expect to come out of this one? Let's give it a shot. So if we compile and run, now we get three again. So why did we get three? Well, it's fairly easy. Again, we set an integer num equal to one. We then call the reference function with that num. Since we're using a reference parameter here, we are changing num to equal three and store it in this reference. So we've essentially made a copy of num and stored it in ref. And we also changed up num. So let's make sure we did that. So we can also print out, we'll put a little comma here. We can print out num as well. So we can make sure that both reference and num were changed based on what we did here. Hopefully this isn't too confusing. I know it's a lot to wrap your head around, but really focus on the two main things that passing in a reference parameter allows you to change that outside of the scope of a function. And then two, a reference also allows you to rename and access variables if necessary. So we'll go back. Let me clear things out this time and make sure to compile and rerun once more. And we see three and three. Awesome. Just like we thought. So what would happen if we didn't pass in a reference here. Let's give this a shot as well, just so you see the difference. Well, now we're getting a warning and it says in function reference on line six, warning reference to a local variable num returned. If we look back at our program, we've created a local variable called num, only local to reference. And we're trying to return that number as a reference. But since it lives locally, that really doesn't work out. So what happens if we run it because we didn't actually get an error Instead, we get a segmentation fault. So just be aware that you can't really return a reference to a local variable inside of a function. All right, well, that's about it. Hopefully you learned a little bit about references today. Make sure to post any questions, comments, or suggestions in the comments section below. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.